In the last two lectures, we have seen what is Fourier series expansion and what are different conditions for the existence of Fourier series. And if you remember, I told you there are three types of Fourier series expansion. The first one is trigonometric Fourier series. The second one is complex exponential or simply exponential Fourier series. And the third one is polar or harmonic Fourier series. Now in this presentation, we are going to discuss the first type which is the trigonometric Fourier series expansion. I will first give you the formulas and then we will understand different terms involved in the formula and once we are done with the basics we will move to the examples. In the first lecture of Fourier series expansion I told you the Fourier series expansion is used only for periodic signals. We cannot have the Fourier series expansion of a non-periodic signal and the same thing you will see in the formulas involved in the trigonometric Fourier series expansion. You will find the formulas are having the time period and we already know the time period is only defined for a periodic signal. So let's move to our discussion. Let's say there is a periodic signal xt and in case of trigonometric Fourier series expansion we can represent this periodic signal as sum of dc or average value of signal xt plus all the cosine terms all the cosine terms plus all the sine terms so our task in trigonometric Fourier series is to obtain the DC or average value of signal XT which we already know how to calculate then we will obtain the cosine terms and then we will obtain the sine terms and their sum will give us the Fourier series expansion of the given periodic signal. Now I will write this in mathematical form. Periodic signal XT is equal to A sub 0 where A sub 0 is the DC or average value of signal XT and we already know how to calculate the DC or average value of a periodic signal. You simply need to calculate the total area in one time period and then divide it by one time period. Simply you will have A naught value. Now we will consider all the cosine terms. So we have An which is the Fourier coefficient multiplied to cos n omega naught t and as we have to consider all the cosine terms we will perform the summation n equal to 1 to infinity we will do the same thing for the sine terms for this we have another coefficient bn multiplied to sine n omega naught t summation n equal to 1 to infinity so this is how you will have the Fourier series. It is very important to remember this expansion. And now we will focus on different coefficients in this expansion. First we will talk about A0. A0 is simply the DC or average value of the given periodic signal. And you can calculate A0 by first calculating the total area in one time period for this integrate the periodic signal in one time period here we are having the fundamental time period t naught and once you have the total area simply divide it by the fundamental time period you will have a naught after this we will see how to calculate the coefficient a n a n is calculated by performing the integration of signal x t multiplied to cos n omega naught t in one fundamental time period and then dividing it by t naught by 2 or we can write 2 over t naught multiplied to the result of integration. Similarly we can calculate the coefficient bn it is equal to integration signal xt multiplied to sine n omega naught t in one fundamental time period divided by t naught by 2 or multiplied by 2 over t naught. A naught, A n and B n are known as they are known as the Fourier 
coefficients and they are very important while obtaining the Fourier series expansion using the trigonometric Fourier series technique the calculation of all three Fourier coefficients should be done carefully and once we have all three Fourier coefficients we can substitute them in the above expansion to have the Fourier series expansion of the given periodic signal. So our main task is to calculate A0, An and Bn which are the Fourier coefficients in trigonometric Fourier series expansion and we will see how to calculate them in examples. Now we will move to the next part of this lecture and in this part we will try to understand the significance of An and Bn. We already know what is A0. Now we will try to understand the physical significance of An and Bn. For this I will take one example. In this example I will assume the periodic signal xt expressed in terms of A0 cosine terms and sine terms. Let's say A0 is equal to 4 plus 3 cos 2 omega naught t plus 5 sine 2 omega naught t plus 4 cos 3 omega naught t plus 2 sine 3 omega naught t and so on. In this example, we will focus on the coefficients an and bn. We already know this 4 here is the average or DC value of signal xt. And if you see the first two terms involving the cosine and sine, you will find the frequency is equal to twice of omega naught. So these two terms are the second harmonics of the signal xt and if you see these two terms you will find the frequency is three times omega naught therefore these two terms are the third harmonics of signal xt and in these two terms in the second harmonics if you see the coefficient along with the cosine term you will find it is three and here the coefficient is five so we can say a2 is equal to 3 and b2 is equal to 5. We can write a sub 2 because here n is equal to 2. If you compare this with this you will find n is equal to 2. Therefore a n is nothing but a2. In the same way b2 is equal to 5 and if you compare them you will find a2 is less than b2. This implies the involvement of the sine term is more as compared to the cosine term when frequency is equal to twice of omega naught. So this implies there is more sine when frequency is equal to twice of omega naught. Now we will focus on these two terms and we can see n is equal to 3. Therefore a sub 3 is equal to 4 and b sub 3 is equal to 2. b sub 3 is equal to 2 and comparing we can see a3 is greater than b3. This implies when frequency is equal to 3 times omega naught, the signal is more like cosine. So this is the significance of the coefficients an and bn. They are simply the weights. Now we will move to the next part of the lecture. The next part is very useful while performing the calculations because every time it is not important to calculate a0, an and bn. Sometimes you will find they are equal to zero depending on the type of the signal. So we are going to discuss this important point. We already know a0 is the average or DC value of the signal and if the signal is symmetrical about the time axis then average value is going to be zero because the total area will be equal to zero. So let me write this important point when the signal is symmetrical symmetrical about the time axis or you can say the x-axis this implies the average or DC value which is represented by A0 is equal to zero. So whenever you see the waveform of the given signal is symmetrical about the time axis there is no need to perform the calculation for A0 as it is equal to zero. We will see the example after a few minutes. Now we will move to the next point 
whenever you find the given periodic signal is an even signal the given periodic signal is an even signal then you can directly say that the coefficient bn is equal to zero and we already know the condition for a signal to be even signal after performing the time reversal we should have the same signal this is the condition for a signal to be even signal now we will move to next point according to this point if you have a signal which is odd signal then there is no need to calculate the coefficient a n as it is equal to zero and we know the condition for a signal to be odd signal after performing the time reversal we should have negative of x t so these three points are very important while performing the calculations because they will save our time now we will see few examples based on these points in the first example we have the rectangular wave in this example you can clearly see the waveform is symmetrical about the time axis and therefore a naught is equal to zero and also this waveform is symmetrical about the y axis it is symmetrical about the y axis or you can say it is mirror image about the y axis this implies the given signal is an even signal and as it is an even signal we can say that bn is equal to zero so there is no need to calculate a naught and bn for this particular waveform you can directly calculate a n for this waveform which will not be equal to zero and we already know the formula for a n so simply calculating the a n you will have the fourier series expansion for this rectangular wave now we will move to the second example in this example also you can see the waveform is symmetrical about the time axis so again the dc value is equal to zero but this time the waveform is not symmetrical about the y axis it satisfies the condition for the odd signals it is not an even signal if you perform the time reversal and then you perform the amplitude reversal you will have the same signal this means it satisfies this particular condition and hence an is equal to zero and bn is not equal to zero so no need to calculate a naught and a n even if you calculate a naught and a n using the formulas you will find they are equal to zero so it is nothing but wasting your time so simply move on to b n and calculate it using the formula the third example is homework for you this is homework for you you need to tell me whether a naught will be equal to zero or not a n will be equal to zero or not and b n will be equal to zero or not so once you have your answer post it in comment section i will end this lecture here see you in the next one